Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, our today's topic is introductory reproduction concepts. Um, in this uh, lecture, uh, I would be uh, trying to explain uh, about different uh, reproductive phenomena and uh, regarding puberty, the breeding season, and the reproductive cycle. So, I um, mean, you can see here it is like uh, so. Starting from puberty, that is also called as sexual maturity. Um, it's period in the life of a female animal uh, when she becomes capable of uh, production and when the reproductive process begins to function. And uh, if we talk about uh, males, uh, it's the age at which it can produce spermatozoa. Uh, that means capable of uh, fertilization um, is called age at puberty. So in females, puberty occurs before mature body size is attained. And uh, she's capable of supplying nutrients for the growth and development of her own body as well as for the growth and development of her uh, young ones. Um, puberty is controlled by certain physiological mechanisms involving uh, the gonads and uh, the anterior pituitary gland. It is influenced by several factors of both, I mean, uh, heredity and, uh, and environment in nature. For example, season, temperature, um, nutrition, etc., etc. So, coming towards uh, breeding season, uh, let's talk about the breeding season. Uh, females of farm uh, livestock have a continuous Easter cycles throughout the year. If they do not become pregnant, um, although a tendency of seasonality occurs in sheep and to some extent in buffaloes as occurrence of successive Easter cycles uh, in the non-pregnant female is more in a particular season of the year. Uh, during the breeding season, the reproductive functions are the same as in females, which are not seen breeders. Before and after uh, the sexual season, however, uh, the reproductive tract and the ovaries of the seasonal breeding females are in a state of a relative quiescence, and this condition is known as anestrus. Now let's uh, move towards the reproductive cycle, or the uh, I would say estrus cycle, in uh, especially in cattle and buffalo. Uh, here. I mean, uh, some pictures of, uh, I would be, I mean, in detail discussing with you the Easter cycle. Easter cycle, uh, this cyclic process is called uh, the Easter cycle, and it consists of a definite sequence of events, both um, physiological and uh, behavioral. The Easter cycle of the cow or the buffalo, it starts after puberty and occurs approximately every 21 days and on an average 17 to 24 days, except for the pregnancy, def uh, definitely um, when the animal is pregnant and it's, in, uh, it's not in cycle. So the re or uh, in case of reproductive disease or any hormonal disorder, I mean, she's not, uh, in the cycle. So during Easter cycle, uh, the reproductive tract is prepared for Easter or heat. Uh, that is the period of sexual receptivity. And uh, ovulation, uh, it's a process of further release of the ova. Um, the cycle can be divided into four parts. And um, these four parts are proestrus, estrus, metestrus, and diestrus. Uh, 
here, I mean, uh, I would be trying to explain these four um, stages or the parts of the cycle. Uh, let's talk about proestrus, which is a period between the regression of the uh, corpus luteum of the previous cycle and estrus. The period uh, 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 proestrus translated the follicular development. Um, I mean, here you can see uh, uh, the sequence of uh, anatomical and hormonal changes that occur uh, during a typical 21 day cycle in which actually pregnancy doesn't occur. So in this whole cycle, pregnancy doesn't occur. Then comes uh, the second part that is known as estrus. It's a period between high amount of estrogen uh, where, when it's present in the blood. The estrogen produces behavioral signs of estrus such as the mounting uh, of other cows, the willingness to stand while mounted by other cow, and general increase of activity. Uh, estrus is followed by a three to four day period referred to as, uh, I mean, met estrus. During this period, the corpus luteum develops under the influence of LH uh, and starts to produce uh, increasing amounts of progesterone. And the period between metastrus and the beginning of the regression of the corpus luteum is referred to as diestrus. So let's, uh, I mean, see this uh, <clears throat> cycle. Um, here, um, I mean, at day zero, the cow is in estrus, standing heat due to an increased concentration of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, estrogen for 18 hours, on an average it's 12 to 24 hours. So as estrogen levels reach a certain threshold level, a surge of LH is released by the pituitary. And about 12 hours after the end of standing heat, the mature graphene follicles, they ovulate or ruptures in response to LH released. Now, let's talk about, um, I mean, these two stages where, I mean, uh, days one to four, here uh, one to two, uh, the cells that formerly lined the follicle change and uh, uh, become the luteal cells of the corpus luteum, this change in, in cell form is actually caused by hormonal action. So primarily by the action of LH. Uh, here, up to this stage, the corpus luteum, it grows rapidly in both size and function. And at this stage, numerous follicles may be seen on the ovary by the day, but, but by the day five, they have begun to regress. So this is where the regression of, uh, I mean, the follicles, at the regression starts. So, during this stage, the corpus luteum continues to develop and typically reaches its maximum growth and function by day 15 or, I mean, 16. It secretes the hormone progesterone, which inhibits LH release by the pituitary gland. During this period, uh, the ovaries are relatively, um, I would say, inactive, except for the functional corpus luteum. So no follicles reach maturity or ovulate because of high concentrations of uh, for progesterone. When we, I mean, go towards uh, uh, the upper range, I mean, above 15 days, uh, I would say 16 to 18 or 18 to 19 days, uh, I would say increased follicular growth and uh, which accompanies estrogen secretion by the ovary it stimulates uh, PDF2 alpha secretion by the uterus, causing a rapid, rapid regression of uh, the corpus luteum. And at day 18 or 19, the corpus luteum is uh, almost uh, non-functional and progesterone release is suppressed, removing the blocking action of uh, progesterone on LH and FSH. 
So of the several follicles that are initially recruited, one becomes dominant by a surge in rapid growth and activity. So as this graphene, graphene follicle grows, it creates increasing amounts of estrogen and the smaller follicles, they start to repress. And uh, <clears throat> here, uh, with the increase in estrogen released by the graphene follicles and a corresponding decrease in progesterone by the uh, a regressing corpus luteum, estrus or heat will occur. Uh, it means uh, cycle has now returned to the day zero. The high uh, estrogen concentration uh, in the blood triggers a release of LH near the onset of heat. So following this surge in LH blood concentrations, the mature follicles uh, the, uh, ruptures to release the ovum and cellular tissue left behind becomes luteinized and forms a new corpus luteum. It means cycle has now returned to day one to two. Progesterone again becomes the dominant hormone. Uh, after that, if, if, if we, I mean, we, we see if uh, over this picture, the whole description along with the, I mean, uh, in diff at different days against the hormonal concentration, um, it would back uh, the, the theory uh, I have already discussed with you that during this, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, whole uh, estrous cycle, uh, how or, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, different uh, uh, hormones they are sometimes they, uh, uh, I mean, uh, increased. I mean, they 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 get the surge of the release or the secretion uh, FSH in the first. So here you can see first wave and the second wave here. So that is uh, actually a very uh, important, uh, especially when the animal is uh, in heat. So you can see here uh, along as the days are, which are relative to estrus, they are increasing different phenomena or different processes, sequence of events is occurring. And uh, actually um, at the end of this estrus cycle, a dominant uh, follicle, uh, it ovulates. But here you can see that at the end of this, uh, I mean, Easter cycle, there is a surge. You can see this green line, uh, sudden surge in LH, which causes the follicles to rupture and uh, cause ovulation after, I mean, second wave. Uh, here you can see a red line, uh, which is representing the Easter dry holes. Uh, first, uh, I mean, at the start of this estrus cycle, uh, when the animal is in estrus, uh, the concentration is, uh, I mean, down, and suddenly, uh, when uh, atratic follicles, I mean, they, they uh, are present uh, here, uh, estrus di uh, diol concentration is increased, and after, I mean, 10 to 12 days, uh, there is a surge in uh, estradiol concentration. At the same time, uh, when LH gets uh, surge, um, its concentration, the estradiol concentration is also maximum. Uh, <clears throat> here you have seen, um, uh, a, a you are seeing the blue line, which is uh, representing FSH. So starting the cycle, it is increased, and when the atritic follicles are high, um, its the concentration decreases till 10 to 11 days. Suddenly it's, it's uh, alongside the estradiol, it also starts to increase the concentration of the FSH. And uh, uh, when uh, after first wave, um, atritic follicles uh, are again becoming uh, dominated, uh, dominating, uh, the, the FSH concentration is down. But at this time of ovulation, after second wave, 
we can say that FSH, estradiol, and uh, LH, they all are at their peak levels before the, I mean, release of the egg or the ovulation. So this was all about, uh, I mean, uh, Easter cycle. So there are, I mean, signs of, uh, I would say, in the cow, buffalo, goat, and mare, the length of the Easter cycle is uh, 20 to 21 days, while ewes have a shorter Easter cycle, averaging between 16 and 7 days in length. So with these uh, physiological, uh, physiological changes, uh, hormonal changes, uh, there are different uh, behavioral changes. So I will also, I mean, uh, discuss with you the signs of estrus. Uh, actually, the outward signs or symptoms of estrus are somewhat similar um, of, uh, uh, I mean, in, in different species of home mammals. Although, I mean, there are some variations of behavior between and within the species. Generally speaking, during estrus, uh, a cow becomes very restless. It doesn't eat, spends little or no time ruminating, and in some cases, hauls and search for the males. She attempts to mount other cows and will stand while they mount her. During estrus, she will stand when the bull mounts and is receptive to the act of mating. The vulva of the cow may become enlarged and congested, and mucus secretions may be seen around the tail, head, or coming from the vulva. The duration of estrus varies considerably between species and between individuals, even within a species. Several factors they affect the duration of estrus in the cow. It ranges from 6 hours to 30 hours, with a mean of about 18 hours. Mostly cows in estrus early in the morning seldom show estrus by late in, in the evening and cow in estrus the first time in the evening tend to be silent the next morning. In case of buffaloes, signs might be less prominent, at least in some cases because of silent heat problem. They sometimes go unnoticed because such an activity occurs more at night than during the day. So I think that is uh, uh, all for uh, the heat, the reproduction concept of uh, heat, how the animal uh, comes into heat, uh, different uh, physiological changes, hormonal changes, and as a result of these changes, how the behavior of the animal changes. So that was it. Thank you very much.